Cam here from Xano, and today we're covering authentication. So what that looks like, how to use it, all within the platform. But before we hop inside Xano, let's just take a quick look at what authentication is. This is a JWE token. This is a token that represents the user or the record ID that we're authenticating, as well as their passkey, allowing them then access to authenticated endpoints. It has five separate parts to it. Here we can see that there is a header, the encrypted key, the randomness, the ciphertext, as well as the tag to ensure that it hasn't changed. Now, while this isn't super necessary to know inside Xano, this is how it works. The public endpoint here, this is going to be a request. Anybody can go ahead and make a request to this endpoint. Perhaps there's public data in your application that everybody should have access to. But then we have our private endpoint. And our private endpoint here, well, we need this auth token. So when an auth token is passed in, when it's validated, we'll get a 200 response, which indicates success. Now, if this same request is made, but without an auth token, we'll go ahead and get an error. And this 400 error is going to represent, well, typically not authorized. So we use JWE tokens that represent the record being authenticated. They can store a little bit of extra information as well. And this is the technology that Xano uses. So inside Xano, let's go ahead and take a look what that looks like. So inside Xano, what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to my database. And if I don't already, I'm going to be creating a user table. We're going to use this table for this demonstration as our authenticated table. We'll click open the table and you can see I have a name, I have my email and a password. And I'm going to go to my settings and I'm going to go ahead and enable authentication. In the onboarding flow, if you didn't select user authentication, then We'll go through this manual step of adding a table. You can even use your database assistant. But once this table has been created and authentication is enabled, we will go to our API group. In our API group, we're looking for authentication. Now, if authentication isn't there, we can always add an API group here, create it, and then add some API endpoints from our authentication tab. And now we have the login, the meet, and the signup. The login and signup are going to be set for public. And the me is going to be set for private. So that private me endpoint is going to require authentication. How does authentication work? Well, inside Xano, we'll go ahead and open up our sign up and we can see that we're going to go ahead and accept a name, an email, and a password. We're going to get the record from the user. And if that user does not exist, we'll go ahead and add that record. Once we've added the user record, we'll take a look at the database table, which we're saying from that table we just created will be the user table for this authentication token. We have our extras, so if we want to store any additional information on this user or on this token, we can. We have our expiration, which lasts for a certain amount of time. In this case, it's going to be a day, but you can also delete that and keep it indefinite. Now, I wouldn't recommend that. In terms of best practice, we want to have it a little shorter than infinite. I'm going to keep it here at a day and then our ID. This ID is going to be from the record we just created. That's our user record. We have our ID here from our user and it's going to communicate with this database table so that when we're in authenticated endpoints and we're requesting information about this particular token, it knows where to look and how to return it. For this example, I'm going to go ahead and create a short lived authentication token. Now I can show you what it looks like when we have an authentication token, it can use it and then what happens when it expires. So I'm setting it for 10 seconds so that when I create it, I'm going to need to be pretty quick to use. So being that my token is short lived, I'll go ahead and click this run. And what I'll do is I'll navigate to my me endpoint, that one that requires authentication. You can see here and I'll pass it into this UI that shows up for authenticated endpoints. This is our auth token input box it is going to take that JWE token. So I'll go ahead back to my sign up and very quickly run this and then take this token. Once the token is had, I'll paste it in this box and we can see when we run it, we're going to get information back about this user. So how does this work? In our me endpoint, you can see that we're specifying for this record to look at the ID. For the field value, we're specifying the entire token. When we click it open, we can see that we have this auth panel here, or that's our ID. It is going to be representing the token needed for these authenticated endpoints, as well as that user. So. When we go ahead and run it with that token we generated, we get to see this is ID 16 and this is the email that we used. So perfect, that user has been created. Now there's one extra thing that I'd like to go ahead and cover and what that is are extras. Now in my auth login endpoint, I'm gonna open up that authentication token panel again and I'll see a lot of the same stuff. It's the same authentication token function, but that extras here, it's gonna be an object that stores data. I get to specify what data I'd like to have. 
So I'm going to go ahead and be responsible for the key value pairs. So maybe we're creating a token for this user, but before they're generated, we get data from a different table and want to store it here. How do we then use this data? We'll go ahead and write, this is the key of extra and the value of hello. This is an extra. I'll go ahead and use with filter. So if I want to change that easily in the future, I can, and I'll click save. I'm going to locate the user with that email. So the one that we just created, I'm going to log them in with that password that we just used. And we'll go ahead and return an auth token here. That auth token will hold that extra data that we'll then use. Let's go back to this meet endpoint where we had previously our authentication. We'll go ahead and do one thing. I'm going to go ahead and add a function. It's going to be my stop and debug. And in my stop and debug, just drag it right up to the top. And in that auth little tab here that I had shown, we'll see extras. If we click open extras, we'll now be able to see with that token what data is being returned. So we'll go ahead and click run, and we can see that this data, the extra key that I created, has this value here. So as we go ahead and use Xana and build out our logic and our function stacks, we could go ahead and specify some of that extra data. It's good for roles and setting additional constraints on users depending on permissions. And so now we see how we can go ahead and create a token and how we can store claims information in our JWB token. So perfect. Now, we have a couple other things that we want to go over. Now, I have this blue magnifying glass here, and when I click it, I'm now able to actually generate tokens on the fly of any of these users. So I'll go ahead and be able to click any of these users, and now you'll notice that when I click Run, I'll be able to run it, but this user doesn't have a claim. If I go back into my input, the way that we'll use claims in this context is by clicking on this cog, where then we can go ahead and specify it in the slide out. I'll be able to specify that this is an extra string. So when I run it again, we can see here in that run and debug, I'm able to still achieve the same result. So with our authentication tokens, we have the ability to change how long they live and how much information we store. They represent the record that we're using to authenticate as well as acts as a pass key for that record to be used in authenticated endpoints and so that we can get information from them, such as in that get record. So now that we know how authenticated endpoints work and how we can use these tokens in our responses, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can actually apply them to other endpoints. So we'll head to any other of our endpoints and I'm gonna click on company. And in company, I'm gonna select this endpoint and it's currently public. I'm gonna to wanna to ensure that my authentication token is required. Even if I don't use it, what I'll do is I'll select my authentication and I'll select my user authentication. And you'll notice that I have two here. This is important and we'll address this in one moment, but for now I'll select the user table. So I'm saying that my users are the only ones that will be able to authenticate on this endpoint. I'll select any of my users here and click run and we can see, yes, the user here, they are going to be required. If I don't pass it in, you'll notice that it's not even going to run, it'll error out. And so now with this, I can go ahead to all of my other endpoints and I can lock them down, ensuring that they are not public, that they are instead private. And I would recommend this, especially for any of the endpoints where we're going to be querying data and that we don't want to have people see it unless they're allowed to see it. So I would just go through one by one, going to my settings and selecting the user authentication. Or what I can do is I can head to my endpoint and simply click on this icon here. It's going to automatically highlight the selection and I'll click save and publish. One of the last things after we go ahead and authenticate all of our endpoints is taking a look at that other option that was showing up. That looks like is me going to the table, going to the settings, and selecting authentication enabled. This allows me now to go ahead and use this particular table for authentication. So if I head back to my API group and my applicants, I've created these manually here where I've gone ahead and created the auth login, auth me, and auth sign up. You could do so by heading to your add API endpoints and selecting authentication, but now that they've been created, I can go ahead and use them. I've already created two users as we had seen in that table, so I can go ahead and log in or just head to the me endpoint. That me endpoint, I can go ahead and click that run button and select any of these records that show up. Now we're noticing here that it's not showing any of the user records, it's only showing the application records. We go ahead and set that again by navigating to this icon and in our authentication, specifying which table we'd like to use for authentication. So that if I go ahead and use any of these and I go ahead and return a record from the table I'm authenticating on, I'll go ahead and see, I'll get that data back. With authentication now understood, with the ability to authenticate against different tables and make our endpoints secure, we can ensure that only certain users with certain privileges and access can access that data.
in combination to preconditions and other logic checks, we can use our extras to go ahead and ensure that we pass extra data in and use that in determining how that user interacts with our app. We can't wait to see the scalable and secure app that you build. Thanks so much for watching. And if you have any questions, leave those in the comment section below. You can also reach out to us with your instance and on the community. Happy building.